Uh, hello again, this is Adnan Klink, and I'm going to be making another video, this time for Windows 8 Consumer Preview that was released today on February 29th. I'm going to be going through uh, a number of new features that were released with this preview um, and that weren't available in the developer preview. Um, if you want to know more about the developer preview or this whole Windows 8 project in general, just head on over to Microsoft.com and you'll probably find the link somewhere over there. Uh, but I will include links to the uh, Windows 8 image files in the description along with the product key that's publicly distributed um, for this preview. Uh, also, I'm going to be running this uh, Windows 8 um, a software inside a virtual machine so excuse any sort of choppiness or general lagginess it's not because of Windows 8 it's because of the virtual machine it just the way the processor works with it it's limited and the graphics support is very limited so I'm going to start at the start screen um, this is what you'll see when you first turn on the computer or come out of sleep or whatever and you just slide up you'll get the password screen I'll sign in here uh, and then you'll be greeted with uh, the new start screen the new user interface it's called the Metro UI um, okay I will start with feature number one which to me was the Microsoft Store uh, this addition to the consumer preview was not there before but it really uh, starts to give you way more like usefulness out of the previews so far right now all the apps in the store are free um, even though they're kind of limited there's still quite a few as you can see here to download you'll just click it and click install it'll walk you through right up here in the corner upper right corner what's happening and when it's done installing it'll tell you uh, once it's installed it will appear in your Metro UI it'll start a new column here since this one is filled and from there uh, you'll just just run the app basically like any of the other, these other ones um, this store uh, is basically just a uh, way to just like the App Store might be for iTunes or or Apple and the Zune marketplace for Microsoft before this one's for Windows it'll help them get programs across to their uh, consumers and install updates like much easier and so on okay feature number two are the um, what Microsoft is calling the main system menu icons or in shorter terms the charms um, to get to those you just put your mouse up to the upper right corner and go down and here they are um, for a touchscreen device you'll just slide out from the side and it'll come up um, this will allow you to search it'll search your whole computer programs files videos pictures whatever sharing will connect you to Twitter accounts or Facebook or those kind of things start will just bring you here to the Metro UI and the start button on the keyboard will do the exact same thing devices will just show you a list of devices connected to the computer and then settings settings are just quick easy and very handy um, settings like net network settings this is if you're like what Wi-Fi you're connected to and even 3G and 4G if you have a chip installed volume brightness foot you're on a laptop it's saying unavailable just because I'm in a virtual machine you can even change language and power and notification settings just because this new uh, system operating system is very uh, mobile like I would say and it will show you notifications up in the corners and like these live icons and so on but those aren't very new features since the last developer preview so I'll move on uh, another nice new feature is the uh, 
switching apps and the app stack, as they call it. Um, to get to this, you'll just uh, go up to the upper left corner, and you'll see your last open app right there. If you click it once, you'll get to the last opened app, but if you go there and move down, you will see an app stack. I just don't have another program open, so I will go ahead and open another one. Here's Maps, for instance. I will let that load up, and then I'll go back to the Metro UI, or the Start screen, as it should be called. Mm, okay, I think that doesn't need more than that. So you go up to the right, left, upper left corner, and you slide down. And this will show you all your open apps, and from here you can close them, or like put them side by side, or whatever, or even close them. So to close, you'll just pull them out and then down, or you can so open one of them and take another one and put it side by side or whatever you want to do, just like that. Okay, next, a nice new feature, well transitions have been greatly improved, um, I don't know if it's very noticeable because this is a virtual machine as I mentioned before but when I ran it as a like a clean install on another partition of the hard drive um, it was it ran very well even though there's no drivers for the graphics card or any of that kind of stuff it still worked pretty well um, if you guys would want any help with that I can try to do something with that Okay. Uh, moving on again, feature number four now, or five, four, okay, um, well, the mouse control has been greatly improved, um, you can just push on the sides to scroll between the live tile, um, okay, I'm just going to make a few. And pushing to the sides of the screen will allow it to move left or right. It doesn't seem to really want to right now, I guess, because I'm on a virtual machine. But basically, you just move your mouse to the right, it'll start scrolling to the right. Uh, and so on. Right now I'm using the scroll wheel. Uh, you can also press this little button down here, and it'll give you a um, somatic zoom, as they call it, I think. And it'll just show you the whole uh, array of live tiles, or yeah, and then you can from there just easily organize your different groups, put them whatever order you want, and then you can just go back into it by clicking. Um, yeah, that's pretty helpful. It would be nice on a touchscreen device, especially, and so on. Um, another new, probably very useful. Uh, feature is the system-wide spell checker. Um, it's kind of obvious by its name, but it'll correct your uh, spelling wherever you are in the system, whether you're online or in an application or whatever. Um, another feature, or sort of feature, I don't know what to call this, but in the desktop view, like the general desktop view. There is no more start button. You just move to the left bottom corner and you'll get the start. Um, something you can press that'll simulate the start button. I don't even know why they got rid of it, but that's how it is. Next feature, well you can close apps now by just dragging them, dragging them down the screen. So you just go to the top, press and hold, and just drag it down and it just closes. Before, to close apps, I, I'm not, I forgot what you had to do exactly, but um, you had to go to the task switcher, and it was a mess. Uh, okay, this one's actually a really nice feature, um, and it is a feature that will enable you to s capture screen pictures and save them directly to a file. To do this, you just click the Windows key and print screen, and you see it just dimmed for a second. But see, now if I go uh, 
if I go to the photos you will see that I have one picture saved um, of the app I was just in. This is completely a picture, not the app. This, I guess, would be a really nice feature, especially for those bloggers out there who um, always do the print screen and then move into an, a program like Photoshop or Paint and uh, save the file that way. Um, another new feature, well this one doesn't pertain that much to the keyboard and mouse, but the online keyboard can be like readjusted in size and shape a little bit. Uh, the last sort of new feature that wasn't very functional in the previous build uh, is the picture passcode lock entry whatever you may call it but basically it'll it'll it will allow you to um, here let's see if I can get it settings more PC settings but it will let you sign into the computer using a picture and you will click and do a guest gesture on that picture and it'll like let you through let's see if I can do it picture password verify first verify choose picture I have one okay I will make my password just the path from Minneapolis to uh, Madison, Wisconsin. Mm, oh, okay, fine. You have to click three separate points to Madison, and then let's say Chicago. Confirm Minneapolis, Madison, Chicago, and there it is. Okay, I'm going to lock the computer now, and I'll show you just how this is done. So lock computer. I'm back to the start screen and when I leave that I have a picture password. See uh, instead of having to type it in which you can still do if you want to you can just get a picture and sign in that way. And I guess this would be really nice especially for a touchscreen tablet or whatever. It would be a really nice feature. Uh, let's see if I have any other features. Mm, not really. Hmm. Okay, well, there's the Xbox Live integration, actually. I forgot about that. Um, where you can actually control your Xbox. Like, you can use it as a remote control for videos and um, like Netflix and so on, but you can't use it to play games. You can launch games, but you still need a controller, which wouldn't make sense anyway, uh, and so on. You can customize, I think, your avatar and your information and chat, I believe. I'm not so sure. But that's basically how the Xbox Live works. Um, there's the Internet Explorer. I don't know if anything was improved in that, but it is basically an entirely touch controlled or basically this there's two put into this software one is more touch it touch based you have giant buttons and whatnot but then there's also if you go back to the desktop view you can launch the normal version of IE10 which is really fast I guess it's supposed to be Okay, well, that is all for now. You guys can ask me questions. I can bring it up, take screenshots, do another video if you really want to. But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you like it and you want more. Um, please ask questions. Um, make requests. I, uh, do whatever. I haven't really had any good ideas for videos those with my, of my subscribers probably know that by now but uh yeah thank you for watching and goodbye